everyone, my name is Reina Luz Allegre and I am the author of The Dreamweaver from Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers, which is about a 12-year-old girl named Zoe who is um, very resourceful and very sweet and very smart, though she doesn't really um, know any of that yet. She just wants everyone she loves to be happy and she's the peacekeeper because um, it seems like a lot of her family members are just always fighting and disagreeing because they all have very different dreams and needs and, and perspectives. And um, her dad has moved her and her brother around a lot uh, ever since her mom passed away. He's a bit unstable. He jumps from like job to job and that um, really bothers her brother who is very responsible and going to college soon. And that's scary for Zoe because her brother has always been her rock. And this summer everything is changing because dad um, brings them to live at the Jersey Shore with their grandpa, with their poppy, who's actually their mom's dad and who they haven't seen very much since their mom passed away a few years before the book starts. And poppy and dad disagree on almost everything. They are very different. Um, Poppy was born in Cuba and immigrated to the U.S. when he was a young man and he um, has very strong work ethic and he really believes in family sticking close together and he resents dad for a, a lot of reasons, especially that um, dad uh, encouraged mom to move away when she was still alive and live far away from her parents and he disagrees with dad on, on how dad jumps from job to job and how he's raising the kids and um, in the scene I'm about to share with you, I'm going to read it with the permission of Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. In the scene, Zoe is excited because she always wants to help. She's such a sweetheart and she wants to help dad with um, his latest business idea which is to start a food truck of grilled cheeses, yummy, on the beach um, near um, her grandpa's bowling alley, the bowling alley that he has owned um, for decades. And um, dad is now sharing uh, sheepishly that, well, the food truck dream isn't panning out. And that really upsets Poppy because it's just, well, there goes dad again, being irresponsible and not following through on things. And so I'm going to share a little bit of their, of their fight. This is Poppy talking. You are a father of two who quits every single job he starts, and it's not like you have even one. Poppy pointed his index finger at Dad's shirt. One big passion you try to make work. Oh no, you are not a painter or a poet or a chef like my Jasmine. No, you have dream of the day, like my restaurant in the bowling alley used to have soup of the day. You're not special, you have specials, Poppy shouted, waving his hands for emphasis. Today grilled cheese, tomorrow motorcycles. Peque va, mijo, you are 44 years old, time to grow up. Not that it's any of your business, but Jasmine and I had an equal marriage. I supported her dreams, Dad said, spitting out the words like they were marbles that had been stuck in his throat for five years. And she supported mine. My daughter did everything, Poppy said, his voice rising. She raised the kids, kept house, and used her salary to bail you out of every mess you make. Equal marriage? You take all the dreams and leave her all the stress? That was equal? You work her to death. Pobrecita. No wonder my baby had the heart attack at only 39. At this revelation, Zoe's own heart nearly stopped. Mommy's death wasn't Dad's fault. It, it couldn't be, right? She glanced at Jose to see what he thought, but her brother looked as shocked as she felt. Her eyes were wide, staring at Poppy. I won't have you speak about me that way in front of my own children, Raphael, Dad said, his voice low and deadly. His eyes narrowed into thin slits. Poppy crossed his arms again and an angry train of Spanish words brawled from his lips. The only word Zoe caught was her mom's name, Jasmine. But Dad stood up so fast, his chair fell backward onto the brown linoleum floor with a loud bang. How dare you, Dad roared. <clears throat> Zoe gaped at him, shocked by his sudden anger and surprised that he'd understood Poppy. She thought Dad, the only non-Cuban in their family, spoke even less Spanish than she did. 
After all, it was he who'd hidden away all of Mommy's Spanish music CDs when she died, taken away every reminder of her culture, from the drawings of guardian angels beneath their mattresses to the hourglass-shaped cafetera cubana she used to make strong coffee when Dad went on business trips. But apparently, he understood plenty. This is my house. I can speak the truth as I see it, Poppy shouted, getting to his feet now, fist balled at his sides. Both men leaned forward menacingly with only the wooden table between them. Zoe's family had always been loud, really loud, though their arguments were never physical. But now, for the first time in her life, Zoe was afraid that Dad and Poppy might actually exchange blows. Stop it, please. Mommy wouldn't want you to fight. Everyone just stop. Startled, Poppy and Dad glanced at Zoe as if they'd forgotten she and Jose were still listening. The invisible fishing line reeling them toward each other was suddenly, thankfully, broken. Dad took a step back. Blinking, Poppy began cleaning his glasses with a napkin. No more fighting, Zoe ordered again, choking back tears. And then she bolted up the stairs to her mother's old room. And so, um, in the Dreamweaver, Zoe deals with um, with her family, with their disagreements, um, and she also learns not only how to be the the peacemaker, the one who sort of um, gets her loved ones to stop bickering with each other, but she. Is she also works to try to figure out what her own dreams are and how she's going to go about achieving them while she helps um, the rest of her family because um, as she later learns her grandpa's bowling alley is in danger of closing and he's owned it for so many years she doesn't want him to lose his dream so Zoe um, in, the, in this book she starts to um, sort of separate herself out which is something I think um, a lot of kids do in middle school where they start to really think um, more independently about what they want and how they see things, not just how they've been told to see them or how they've automatically uh, um, assumed things would be based on their, their family's perspectives. And, but she's still, she's, she's such a sweet girl. She loves her family so much and um, she, will, she will still try to to help them wherever, whenever she can. And um, in addition to all of the, the family drama, this is also um, a fun and heartfelt summer read um, with um, a lot of fun summer stuff like bowling and going to the beach and baking. And I hope that, um, that you'll pick up a copy. And I also hope that you have a wonderful summer. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.